Now, unfortunately, there's quite a lot of terminology for titrations because I think historically they have been super important. These days, uh, computers basically do this for you and uh, you may pro possibly, you may never need to do one of these in uh, if you go into the science industry. So because they are so critical in the past for decades, we even had competitions in schools, um, they develop their own terminology and it gets popular. And I guess because there's still questions and textbooks that use it, I, I still have to cover these words, although um, I think we could get along quite well without having them. Um, but anyway, so titration itself, it's just finding out a, a known unknown concentration using a known concentration of something. Uh, that known concentration is called a standard solution. It's done up very accurately. It's sometimes called a titrant. And the stuff you're analyzing is called the analyte. Now, the actual volume that you use of um, the standard solution to um, react completely with the analyte, which is often neutralization, is called the, uh, the theta. And the indicator um, is there's usually a color change, and that's, that's the indicator, and it's based on the pH. Um, the color of the indicator changes um, based uh, on various different pH ranges and you choose the right indicator that matches the reaction that you're going to use. So if the reaction changes pH at a certain area, you'll use that to choose an indicator that also changes color uh, in that certain range. Um, okay, so there's all those terms there um, that you may need if um, a question comes up and uses those terms to describe a certain chemical. Uh, just one more page of terminology. This one is a little bit more important. Um, the equivalence point is the actual uh, point where the reaction is complete uh, and you can um, get that from a pH meter if it's a neutralization reaction that's 25 degrees Celsius, um, you'll know. Uh, but often you don't get this curve if you're not using like a drop counter and a pH meter um, and you have to rely on the indicator change and that's called the, the end point and the human eye can only detect that change over a range of about two units and usually it's not significant it's it's pretty much the same thing um, but just be aware that the endpoint is not as accurate as the equivalence point uh, and just for those who have done equilibrium and doing buffers um, just to mention now while we've got the ph uh, curves here uh, that this is the buffer region um, and we will talk more about that when we talk about buffers and uh, pH curves. Uh, so at the start of the S-curve, 